I've been working on the purple piece. I did a little bit more work in my live stream, got some purple fibers couched down, and then I tacked down these rings and I'm going to wrap them. We'll see where they take me from there. Just did a few little pieces of purple sari scrap that I had. That's all I had of it just to get some texture. And we're just going to explore purple, I guess, on this piece. And I like having no rules, no pattern that I have to follow. These are just keychain rings. And I'm just going to go around and around on them. We had a great discussion in the live stream today about uh, things that we had learned during the year and tips and things that we could share, but it was really interesting to see how many people had learned to embrace the artist that they already were. And that just reminded me of something that I read recently, is you need to make work for the artist you are, not the artist you want to be. And I think, for me, that rings true. Some people might say, no, you need to aspire to something else. But for me, if I am true to my authentic artist self, it feels like everything falls into place then. And it's when I'm trying to do something else, when I'm trying to be um, something, whether it's for the market, whether it's for judgment, you know, you want to submit something, um, it, it becomes more difficult for me. All right, I'm going to actually just put that needle aside and see what else we can explore on here, since I know that's not exactly exciting to watch being done. I've got some other things that I could just do. I kind of like getting some little texture bits down. And this thing right here sort of bothers me, that straight line going up the center. So I'm sort of thinking I might want to, but I don't want more straight edges. I could couch this, but I'm thinking take my scissors and just maybe little snips of this. I'm just kind of cutting in between the lace so it's not quite so perfect because perfectionism in art, you're never going to achieve it. Everybody's going to have a different definition for what perfectionism is. All right, I kind of like that. And see already that breaks up that line. More contrast there. Try the right side, try the wrong side, doesn't matter. What else do we have? I don't have a lot of purple. Let's see. This is kind of bright pink. I don't like that on there. What if we took just a little bit of this. Do something with that. I still think we're going to have to just use this lace just to kind of disguise that just a little bit. And of course, you're not going to see as much when I get the stitches on it. All right, and then I'm going to need to do one more because I need an odd number. That's a straight edge. I don't want a straight edge. And that doesn't do anything for what I've got here. It's a little too perfect. I can't do it. It's too perfect. I can put the lace over there. <clears throat> All right, doesn't do me anything for right here, though. I don't think I'm going to like that, but maybe... So maybe, so we need to come up with something else that we like. And I'm thinking, okay, that sort of alters it a little bit. We up just a little more. So maybe something like this. This is all about texture for me. I think that might do it. I think that might be something to do. Okay, so what else do we have that we can add here? Little tiny bit of other sorry ribbon. All right, and I just wanna, I'm gonna kinda tuck that in over here. This one can come over here. 
It's kind of getting this laid out, figuring out what can go where. This bigger one maybe can go over here. And this is yet another color. You can picture a bunch of knots in this area, actually, or maybe seed stitch. Uh, let's put this one over here. And I still have this. And I'm thinking if I gather it, yeah. All right, I need some thin thread. All right, and what I want to do here, this is just kind of a rough square. I can do it a couple ways. You could do a gathering stitch or you can just sort of gather it up yourself. And then you can decide if you want it to go upright like this or laying down. And I think I kind of like the idea of it laying down. I mean, it's not going to lay completely flat. So see, it gives you just another little bit of texture. So I'm just going to tack that on there. And then you can come in with some more knots or things around there. Okay, I'm back and I've done a few things. Uh, I have stitched this ring down and these two rings I have wrapped so they are still very loose and I'll need to do something to all three of them to finish them off. But the most important thing I did was grab a piece of flannel and just do some little tiny stitches to tack it down. It gives it a little bit more weight and I really need to remember that. I have a bad habit of not giving myself enough heft of a backing material to make the stitching enjoyable for me. And so I've been thinking about how I want to handle these rings. And if you were in the live stream where I was working on these things, one of the things that um, I'm not crazy about, and it's just a personal thing for me, is I didn't want perfect circles. And I can do something to make them perhaps a little less perfect. I love the suggestion somebody made in the live is I could hammer these so they would be un imperfect shape so that would work good on the metal ones not so good on the solid plastics but it would be nice to have some variety so I could you know I didn't tie really a knot off on here and I could but I think I'm going to just try and incorporate that into making this imperfect because if you can see here I, I didn't do a perfect job of pulling these stitches around and that was on purpose uh, because of the way it was stitched down now if you want to wrap a ring nice and neat you can just do it before you're going to stitch it down and you can wrap it, you can do a buttonhole stitch around it, you can make a dorset button out of it, all kinds of things. But I was in a hurry and I was just experimenting. So now we're going to experiment some more. And this was a, a really nice yarn and now I'm just using a pearl cotton, I think this must be a five. And I'm just going to see, this might not work, I don't know. It would have been easier if I had threaded it. I kind of want to make a little pile of something. I don't know. That's not going to work quite the way I had in my head. And that's what happens sometimes. We try these things out and it's like, eh. All right. It's just going to wrap around the side. So that's fine. It's just going to help make it a little bit more lopsided, which is the other thing I was going for. And I might end up not liking this at all again and have to take the whole thing out, and that's okay too. But what I wanted to do was get to this point where I could do some knots. Okay, so maybe this will work. I just wanted to do some knots to kind of make a wad of messy purple blobs here. I mean, that, that's the only way I can describe it. I'm not doing perfect French knots. I'm doing nice, loose French knots. Yeah, it is working. I'm okay if I have a perfect center, but I just didn't want a perfect center and a perfect outside. Because, you know, perfect just puts too much pressure on me, and I can't do it. I stress out, and then I don't do anything. All right, this is going to be a lot more fun to stitch on now that I've got that flannel on the back. Wow. Learn from my goofs. Or learn from your own goofs. I mean, that's that's the plan, right? Try something. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. It's not a failure. It's just a learning experience. All right, so that did what I wanted as far as holding down 
the outside edge. Now let's see if I can do the rest of what I wanted because this is a really thick yarn. What I'm thinking I can do is just sort of randomly add more of these loose stitches so you're not going to see the uneven wrap job. Is this making more work? Yeah, but it's also going to give me the unevenness that I want. It's just a personal preference, and I have only learned this by letting myself explore other things for the last, um, probably the last couple years, I've been playing with this sort of idea of what kind of stitching really appeals to me. All right, so I'm just going to have this mass of knots, and since I know that's just that ring in there, I can just come up, and I might just... Yeah, I might just keep building this up. I like this idea. And then, of course, I can come in afterwards uh, with beads on top of that. And that's going to make it really interesting for me. Really interesting for me. I was thinking I was going to call this Purple Rain, but, you know, I love Prince, but I'm not so sure I want to name a piece of art after one of his songs. So... Purple something. Or maybe not. Maybe the purple is implied when you look at it. Maybe it's something else. Alright, I can already see where I'm going to go with this. Absolutely see where I'm going to go with this. I'm just going to use up this and a little bit of thread. And I'm just going to come halfway across with that. The nice thing about doing really loopy, loose French knots is they all look absolutely perfect just the way they are. And I can take advantage of coming up with this other thread to kind of move this one over a little bit if I really want to. And I sort of think I want to. Just to bring it down just a little more. Yeah. There we go. So see, I'll be able to come along and do some more, maybe in some different colors, and blend that in very nicely. All right, so let's do the same sort of thing up here with this one, which is really loosey-goosey. And I think we'll come in with some darker purple here. I don't have that much purple thread, which is why I didn't worry about trying to be very precise covering all this. Normally, I would go all the way around and make it nice and, and covered, but. I relieved myself of that expectation. Okay, just kind of trying to see if I can loop this purpley bit down since there's no knot on the end. You know, if you take shortcuts, then sometimes you got to come up with solutions to the problems you create for yourself. And I, I'm not stressing about that kind of thing anymore. Um, crummy knots like that that aren't really a French knot, they aren't a stitch knot is also not a problem because it's just thread, so you can go ahead and stitch right through it. And that's what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do on this one is I'm just going to... Let's see how this works. This might work, this might not work. I'm going to make a French knot, and I'm going to come down on the other side. Let's see what that looks like. If we don't like it, we'll just do some more French knots over it. That sort of works. I don't think I would do it all the way around because I don't think it's going to... I think it would try to be look like I was trying to balance something out and that's not what I'm trying to do. But for a little variety right here, yeah, that would work. You could go all the way around. We'll do a couple more so you can actually see. Let's see, come up on this side. So that could give you a nice little pattern if that was what you wanted. So since my word for th this year is texture, that's kind of what I want to do is just explore all the various ways 
that I can make texture with stitch or with fabric or with fibers. And we have a big old mess here to, to clean up. And this is the ugly duckling stage of work that you know I, I really like. I get frustrated at first because it's like, oh man, what was I thinking? And I get excited because there, there's the, that's where all the potential is for creative problem solving. It's like, how can I get myself out of this situation? I think this might have like a nest of beads or something in the center when I'm done. I may need more purple beads. So I think I might come back in here with some embroidery floss of a different shade and fill in the bare spots there because if you're using a thinner thread, then you're going to get a completely different texture again. Just some base layers. So let's see, what else are we going to do to this? So I know I'm going to come back in on the sari and do something. What do we have in the way of colors? A lot of floss. That's where most of my purple is, is in floss. And I think this is like an acrylic. Let's try. As I recall, this makes nice loopy knots. This came in some batch from um, of miscellaneous threads I got on Etsy. And it's very thin, but it's acrylic. I think it was some kind of tapestry yarn. But I think when I doubled it, made some nice little loops. So let's just come in here to this lace. Got my little stitches that are holding it down, so we're just going to add some loose knots. Are some loose French knots. Let's add over here a couple of colonial knots. They kind of look the same when they're all looped in down like that. I can make them a little neater if I wanted to. Pull them tightly. French knot. That's all. Just going to make some clusters of knots. Maybe I don't want that loop quite so big, so I can come in here and do a few French knots to pull it down a little bit more. I'll do one more and have a little cluster here. up the last of it. There. Just a little bit of wonky texture to begin to build this up. There we go. We are off to a pretty good start. I'll be back after I work on this a little bit more.